All praise to you. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we have given thanks. Amen. I'd like you to desire a definite encounter today. There are days and there are certain days. There are days you don't have to write their name diary. They're just there because of the magnitude of the encounter with God that you have. 22nd of March, 1982, the in my mind, if you burn the paper where I wrote it, it doesn't matter. If the system crashes where I thought, it doesn't matter. It's in my mind, it's in my spirit, it's in my body. When God handed over to, to, to me the key of supernatural prosperity as a person. September 4, 1987, is in my spirit, is in my mind, is in my body. When God handed over to me the key to corporate prosperity. Amen. Amen. Every kingdom key has eternal value. They keep working as long as you keep working them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When Jesus handed over me to me the key of my liberty from sickness and disease. Today we have 120 written testimonies of healing from coronavirus. Hallelujah. From across 16 nations. Including Nigeria. Amen. Amen. Real life testimonies. United Kingdom. Doctors included. Health workers inclusive. Canada. United States. Germany. Italy. Ireland. Russia. Qatar. Burkina Faso. Ghana. Cameroon, Kenya, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and South Africa. Come on, give the Lord praise. Awesome God. You are returning with your own key today. Amen. To a world of unending breakthroughs Amen. in all areas of your life. Amen. What do we call keys? Not magic wand. <laughs> Is there one to you, lawyers? He was talking to lawyers of those days. For you have taken away the key of knowledge. Luke eleven thirty two. It's revelation. Encounter with the right word that opens your desired door. It's not every key that opens the door. Yes, sir. It's a right key. How forcible, irresistible, unstoppable are right war. Hallelujah. Job 6 25. Yes. The right word is what we call the key. It's the right key that opens your desired door. And that light, that revelation, shines in darkness. And darkness can't stop it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That man was thanking Jesus for the simple but powerful word. Amen. You know, the, the thing that confused people is that it's simple. Amen. You mean that with all this my trouble, this one only will solve it. He <laughs> said, fear lest by any means that Satan beguide you Amen. through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the gospel. The simplicity that is in the gospel is ever, ever simple, but foreverly powerful. Mm. Ever simple, but foreverly powerful. Can you imagine me assessing the key of each free marriage before we got married? And we have been married now for about 30 days. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely each free. No prayer point one day. My God. Hallelujah. Simple, but powerful. Some are beating themselves every day. It's a daily contest. I know a word. But losses. You slap your spouse. You carry her to the hospital. You pay money. And it's money you are fighting on. 
<laughs> Jesus liberated me for free on three on seven counts. Seven counts of life that broke out while I was in a commercial vehicle. Hallelujah. I was looking for people to scrape for it. My counselor said, David, what are you looking for? I said, he's free money. He said, how do you mean? Then you have told you the story several times. Today, the master key to a world of business breakthroughs without human hand yes. will be handed over to you. Amen. Amen. Anybody can see anything about me, but have I ever borrowed in your house? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, have I ever stolen? <laughs> Amen. He said, you don't know, you should know. God does not bless thieves. Mm. <laughs> he causes them. Hallelujah. He said, the cause of the Lord is in the heart of the thief. Did you see cause in my house? <laughs> said, if you don't know whether I steal or not, that's enough proof. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> is there anybody can tell? Anybody can tell. Mm. There are actually tests in scriptures. Yes, yes. That shows where God's blessings are and where they are not. That's right. <laughs> you are returning with that key today Amen. that will launch you to your own realm of unstoppable breakthroughs. Amen. Has this church ever known a setback? No. That's why some are angry. And, and in the midst of this thing, we are just growing. Um, we are not just growing, we are blowing. <laughs> we are starting new cells. Now even today, we are starting new churches. Hallelujah. You know, last month we did six one four. Mm -hmm. uh, we started today again. <laughs> Amen. I will tell you tomorrow how many God started today. Amen. Amen. Now, now listen to me. We list properties. We list missionaries' housing. Amen. Amen. We furnish the assemblies. Amen. And we didn't borrow. Hallelujah. So what's your problem? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That's where you are going to. Amen. Your business will be exploding. Amen. The enemy will be getting angrier. Amen. And God will be getting happier. Amen. And you'll be serving God the more. Amen. That shall be your portion. Amen. 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 Can any devil stop this prophet? It's the person who sent you that to fear. Not the one you are sent to. I don't know whether they say that proverb in your place. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I feel like preaching Yoruba this morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, let the word you are put in my mouth yes. open up the heavens over your people. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated. Amen. Now, I want the last stanza of showers of blessing to be on the screen. And that's the key to assessing the realm of an open heaven. Now, studio, put that last uh, stanza of showers of blessing. Amen. You lost it? Do that quickly, do that quickly. There shall be showers of blessing if we must trust and obey. There shall be seasons refreshing if we let God have his way. Hallelujah. You know, hymns and songs are supposed to speak. Yes. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Spiritual songs. Colossians, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19. There shall be showers of blessing if we must trust if we but trust and obey, you, you trust and obey what he says to be done, there shall be seasons of refreshing if we let God have his way. That's the showers of blessing, chapter 1, verse 4. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. You let God have his way. Because he empowers us for wealth on the basis of his covenant. Psalm 
So no one ever gains access to an open heaven realm without obedience to the terms of the covenant. No one. Remember the theme of the month as declared here on Wednesday at the beginning of the spiritual week of emphasis? Is financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. We serve a God of equality. He's no respect of persons. The same God is rich unto all that call upon him. Same God. Because the same price is paid on every one of us. We have a blood price on our lives that gives us equal access to whatever redemption offers. Same God. No difference between the white and the black. The same law over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Romans 10, 12. And when he went to the cross, he rose from the dead and obtained for us, all of us, power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Seven for the redemptive package, equally available to every believer. We serve a God of equality with whom is no respect of persons. And that's why I say humorously all the time, everyone in this church worldwide is a timber and caliber. You may not see the timber because you need glasses to see. <laughs> you may not see the caliber but inside him. <laughs> everyone has equal value in the sight of God. One of our sons here testified, he said, I, a bus conductor, I, a bus conductor, I now own my companies, I have operations abroad, I go to UK and anything as I want. Now, I, a bus conductor, didn't go to school. Praise God, is God looking for your certificate? He's looking for your faithfulness. In the covenant. You should help me to find out which school that Abraham went. And Isaac. And Jacob. And Joseph. He just graduated from the prison. He had to look for blade to shave. That money. And borrow somebody's clothes. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will change your story. Amen. You should get excited that we serve a God of equality with whom there is no respect of persons. You do what somebody else did from the world that worked for him, it will work for you. It's not maybe God just chose that person. No, he chose you too. So we didn't in this series on gateways to financial fortune. Gateways to financial fortune. My ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, are my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, um, verse 8 and 9. It doesn't matter how profound your way or our ways may be, his ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts than our thoughts. When Job stumbled on divine secret for financial fortune, it was a youth. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Job 29 verse 4. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. As a youth. As what? A youth. 
as a youth. Our daughter Nkechi here, um, a youth, fresh from school. By covenant alignment, covenant, by taking covenant responsibility, Jesus shot her into the limelight globally. As he did, he decorated her with marriage on top. Ah, sweet God. So whether you are a youth or you are an elder, when you key into covenant practice, it changes your story. It changes your story. Now, the story of Job is a proof on how high about his thoughts are and his ways are above our ways. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth. He just discovered the secret of serving God with your resources. Serving God and the inter of his kingdom with your resources. And God shot him into the limelight. It's a brand new day for you. Amen. Gateways to financial fortune. We saw fortune defined in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able, based on covenant practice, to make all grace abound towards you. So that you always have enough sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. All sufficiency in all, that's what we call financial fortune. All sufficiency in all things. All sufficiency in all things. How? Verse 6. But this I say, he that sows sparingly shall also live sparingly. Somebody said, how can they say money is a seed? We didn't say so. The Bible says so. <laughs> and he that sows bountifully shall live bountifully. Now verse 7. So, every man therefore according to his, as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. So giving is sowing. Not grudgingly, of necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able, amen, amen, on the basis of the covenant of giving and receiving, God is able to make all grace abound to us. So that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. You know why we don't borrow as a ministry? We have all sufficiency. <laughs> in Jesus. Amen. Now we don't call members to a special caucus meeting. He has. We have all sufficiency by him. Not that we are sufficient ourselves to give anything about ourselves, but our sufficiency of God. All sufficiency. All sufficiency. Also, in all things. Somebody's here. The days of your financial struggles are finally over. Amen. The days of murmuring and complaining are finally over. Amen. Some hate to hear that, but it's normal. He said, The wicked shall see it and be grieved. And that's the truth. And no word of God will fall to the ground. Amen. So the wicked will come to be grieved at the testimonies of God's people. It's normal. But can't do anything. He said, The desire of the wicked shall perish. They, are, they won't live to see what they are talking about. We know it will soon fall. We know it will crash. That business can't survive. Uh, it will outlive them. The business will outlive them. Amen. Because of the bitterness in their heart. There's nothing to bother about the enemy. Your enemy has no future. Everyone that blesses you, I will bless. And he that causes you, I will cause. So where is the future of a man under a cause? Of God. Cause of God, not cause of a man. No one here will come under a curse of God. Amen. A passionate pursuit of God and the interest of his kingdom is key to a world of supernatural abundance. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Thou shalt arise, he said in Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15, and 
comfort Zion because the time to favor her, yet the said time has come. For thy servants take pleasure in the things of the kingdom. Favor every aspect of it. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. So the blessings coming upon your life will be like that of Obedidom. That kings will take notice of. Amen. Can I hear your amen? Amen. And be humbled by it. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom with one's resources is gateway to a world of financial fortune. The young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that seek God shall not lack any good thing, shall not want any good thing. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He delights in it. Psalm 35 and verse 27. Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. Those promoting my kingdom. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. We take pleasure in the prosperity of those serving his interest. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things that others are dying to get, day and night, don't sleep, shall be added to you. But please know, kingdom wealth cannot be achieved. Kingdom wealth is entrusted. It's not an accomplishment. Oh man, I got it. It's an entrustment. If therefore you have not been faithful, Luke 16, 11, in the unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches. So it's entrusted to us because we can be trusted by God to use it for his purpose. It's entrusted, it's not accomplished. What's his purpose? My cities, through prosperity, shall yet be spread abroad. It's for the spreading of the gospel to where? To all nations, all kindred, that's clans and families. And all tribes, out of every tongue, every kindred, every people and nations, that's the word. And this gospel shall be preached among all nations, and then shall the end come. That's why the dimension of whether the world has never known is just visiting the church now. Amen. Heavy financial giants of global rating, yes, yes. no matter the gang up of hell, yes. is rising in the body of Christ. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Many, many ministers will be sharing the same order of testimony as we are given privilege to share. There is not one man on this earth, living or dead, who will say, if I were not there, concerning this ministry. There is no human promise that could carry where we are now. But heaven's inexhaustible resources, which will be made open to every believer who care to trust and obey. Who care to trust and obey. They come under heavy showers that will get them continually drenched the best of God, and be having channels to with the push it. Somebody here one day will rise up and say, I want to be 1,000 of those rural churches. Amen. And we'll deliver it for free. And be thanking God for the privilege. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for such individuals. 
who are overtaken with passion for God and the interest of his kingdom. We have come to understand that God empowers us for wealth on the basis of his covenant, not our idea, his covenant. I was out on three days of waiting on the Lord and searching scriptures. You know, people most of the time go only to pray. No. Prayer and fasting is searching for questions that need answers in your life through a diligent search of scriptures. Then shall your light break forth like the morning. Your head shall spring forth speedily. You'll find your way to your higher places. You shall be like a watered garden, like streams of water. Whose water spilled out. I saw the reality of kingdom prosperity across the Atlantic in the U.S. from very sincere, honest people of God. I said, Jesus, show me this secret. Because the church I met had that, you know, that humiliating proverb, as poor as church rat. That's how we grew. We celebrated poverty. We, we, we define poverty as godliness to show how poor God is. There are no houses in heavenly mansions. There is no tar road. They are all paved with gold to show how poor God is. <laughs> Amen. I know there must be a secret to this. So I went in search of that and I took my mentor's books, um, The Laws of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland, and his wife's own, God's Law, I mean, um, God's Will is Prosperity. So whatever the husband forgets, the wife may write. And with my Bible. And on the third day, light broke out. Let me tell you what God said. My son David, that is from, you know, Rema is behind every single of scriptures. From Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, I got to it, my eyeballs came out. It's not the first time I was reading, but it was the third, third, first time I had that encounter. My son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise, so it does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise, it has no respect for fasting. You know, we're a fasting church. How many know that? Yes. Fasting is part of our catechism. Yeah. <laughs> he said, my prosperity plan is a covenant. And until your part is played, I am not committed. So it's only my part that can commit his integrity to empower me for wealth. So I must know what my part is. Now, Jesus, what is my part? Why the artimony? Sea time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter shall not cease. My eyes came out bigger. No, but how the life is this covenant? Very simple thing. Jeremiah 30, 33, verse 20 and 21. God speaking said, Accept my covenant. But God said, The Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant with my servant David be broken, that I should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and we deliver it, the priest, my ministers. Every child of God is redeemed a priest. So my covenant with the redeemed is as enduring as my covenant of the day and of the night. Now, see the humorous God. He said, every time you wake up in the morning and you see the sun, know that my covenant is still in force. You look up in the night and you see the moon, then know that my covenant is still in force. Then, my spirit man rose up. You know, he said, on the third day I will raise you up. <laughs> my spirit man rose up. I stood on my feet and spawned. I can never be poor. March 22, 1982. 
Some are still learning how to read and write that time. What is he talking about? Before you knew how to read or write, I had those golden words from heaven. Amen? Amen. I connected with the covenant of sowing and reaping with a new level of understanding. I'm blessed. Some people even say whether they are right or wrong, I don't know. They say I was the richest pastor in the world. And I said they don't like, since I don't uh, borrow and I don't uh, beg. So who is a rich man? The one who doesn't borrow, who doesn't beg. What he has in the account is not important. But he doesn't borrow, he doesn't beg. Mm. And I know there are many rich people that they don't know. <laughs> Were rich by God. That's what happens. So it's not about uh, somebody's view. It's about operating by God's views to get out of your rot and begin to experience the glory of heaven. Can I hear your amen? amen. So we are empowered for wealth on the basis of his covenant. Not our ideas. It's also important for us to understand Okay, let's go this way. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 and 19, 15 to 19, just to let us know that sowing and reaping is not one pastoral interpretation of giving and receiving. <laughs> he said, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and what? Receiving. That is concerning sowing and reaping. Because when I was in Thessalonica, you sent unto my necessities once and again, invest into the kingdom. He said, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Every genuine minister is seeking the good of the, the minister to continually, continually, sir, continually, 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 continually. But I have all and have, and I'm full, having received from a part for the things which were sent from you, an old of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well pleasing to God. Therefore, my God shall supply all your needs. So giving and receiving is what launches us to the realm of financial fortune. That's the anchor of our assets. I call it the master key to a world. Of financial fortune. If you are not a giver, you are not a candidate for his prosperity. You are not. You can fast for three hundred and twenty days out of three sixty-five days in a year. It won't change your story. God is no more. Whatever a man sows, not whatever a man prays, that shall he reap. You sow to the flesh. I don't believe in all those nonsense. You live corruption. You sow to the spirit. You live life everlasting. Life everlasting. There are people here that nobody in your lineage will ever be termed poor. Amen. From generation to generation. Amen. It's also important to know that the covenant is superior to every economic climate. Superior. Superior to every economic climate. The covenant is superior to every economic climate. There was famine in Egypt. Famine upon the whole earth. Money failed in Egypt. Economic crash. Genesis 47 and verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Glory to God. 
Now, it went as bad as offering themselves to be sold. You go down there to verse 18 and 19. But not only that, in verse 27, we saw a remarkable difference. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, the same land. And in the county, they call it country, county or local area of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, in the midst of famine, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. That's the superiority of the covenant over every harsh economic climate. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the harsher the climate, the higher you fly. Because his ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts than our thoughts. In Psalm 33, verse 18 and 19, the word says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. You know, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted daily in his commandment. So doing what God says is what defines the fear of God. It's not phobia. It's not, hey, God is coming. That's the devil. He shivers when God is coming. The fear of the Lord is in doing his bidding. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him and upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. You do what God says, you are kept alive. No matter the happiness in the world. Now, Psalm 37 and verse 18 and 19. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their what? Inheritance. Come on now, read with me. And their inheritance shall be forever. Now, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. All our covenant fathers in scriptures went through economy challenges triumphantly. There is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So economic challenges are not new. As far back as Genesis, it's not population increase. Some people are funny. They think it's population, right? So let's kill people so we can reduce population. What a wicked heart. What a wicked thought. How many were there in Egypt? What was the population of the entire world? Where money failed? Glory to God. God who fed three million people in the wilderness without their sowing any seed. Don't play with God. Every human soul is precious to God. Anyone involved in destroying them is destroying his own lineage. Anyone. Every soul carries equal value in the sight of God. The ones on the streets, the one under, under the bridge, the homeless, everyone. There was famine in the time of Abraham, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10. And Abraham became very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold, Genesis 13:2. There was famine in the days of Isaac. Genesis 26 verse 1. And there was a famine in the land. That's beside the famine that was in the days of Abraham. This is Abraham. This is Isaac's own famine. And Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines unto Gerah. And God said, Thou shalt not go into Egypt. Oh. Stay here. And he did. And Isaac sold in that land, verse 12, and received in the same year a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man works great. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. And the Philistines envied him. In spite of the famine, stay on there. Don't move an inch. And get the law of sowing and reaping. 
Now, watch verse 16 and see what happened. Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Can you imagine? <laughs> And verse 26. They saw his great name was just blowing and blowing. And then Abimelech went to him from Gerah. And Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Pekor, the chief captain of his army. Now watch what they said. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, saying ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? <laughs> and they said, We saw certainly, amen, that the Lord was with thee. And we said, this man, if you don't go and make peace with him, his army will overrun us and cast us out of this, out of this land. Let there be now an oath between us, even between us and thee. And let us make a covenant with you. Amen. Verse 27. That thou will do us no hurt. One man. Amen. Amen. A nation. One man, because he had the chief of army staff. One man, so he's not local government. Local government doesn't have a chief of army staff. <laughs> Amen. Do us no harm, oh, because we have not told you, as we have done unto thee nothing but good. And I've sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the bless of the Lord. We now know we need you for a covering. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the midst of famine, nothing can tamper with God's agenda in your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And then we saw famine again in the, in the time of Jacob, Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one upon another? Behold, I've heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from theirs that we may live and not die. So they could import food. They could import food for his family in the time of famine. Now, the family went to another level. Chapter 43, verse 1. And the family was sore or grievous in the land. And they came to pass and they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt. Their father said unto them, Go again, oh, buy a little, buy us a little food. They had enough to keep going and coming. He said, This time take double money with you. Because you have a lot of money. In the time of money. Verse 12. Don't let anything stop you from engaging in covenant practice is the only way out of harsh economic climate keep doing it we saw Abraham was a tither Abraham was a liberal soul we saw Isaac a liberal soul you welcomed those who hated you and fed them because he drew from Abraham the Lord said I know him he will he will command these children to walk after his ways. I know him. Jacob was a tither. I'll give you a tenth of everything that I did talk about. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't be slothful, but follow us of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Don't be slothful. Take steps after those who have obtained the promises. And then you'll be the next one on the line. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. That is how covenant practice empowers believers to prevail in hard times. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Bring your the tithes to the storehouse that they may be made in my house. And prove me now here, which I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There will be not room enough to receive. 
and I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. And they shall not devour, destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your fruit, your vine cast out fruit before time, said the Lord of hosts. Then shall you return, verse 17, and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between those that serve God and those that serve him. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn like an oven, hardship of a higher order. And all the proud, forget about those nonsense. What is he talking about? And all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. Chapter 4, verse 1. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts. And it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, your case will be different. Amen. Your case will be different. Amen. So covenant practice is what empowers believers to triumph in hard times. Thank you, Lord. Well, Today is a covenant day of business breakthroughs. I'll show you these few biblical keys to business breakthrough. First, one must be born again to belong to the breakthrough family of Christ. When you are saved, you become a member of the household of God. Praise God. Yeah. Ephesians 2.19 Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. The breakthrough family of God. It is new birth that makes anyone become a member of that family. And what a family. You yeah, are the light of the world. That means you are praise setters. Praise God. Pathfinders and trailblazers. A city set on a hill. You are never in the valley that cannot be hidden. The house of God, out of God, is a breakthrough family. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 11, hear what he said. Very there is unto you among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven, greater than he. You know what that means? Every story of greatness that the Old Testament contains, does not match and cannot match the redemptive potentials in you. The Philistines envied Isaac. Your world must envy you. Amen. I don't mean your village, your world. Amen. Every seed of Abraham is a global giant and thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed because of obeying my voice. Genesis 22 verse 18. And I see shall all the families of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. And if you be Christ then you are Abraham's seed. Galatians 3 29. And here's according to the promise. So new birth makes you a member of God's breakthrough family. In these last days, number two, supernatural breakthrough shall become the core identity of every child of God. How do you mean? Psalm 87 that we read at the opening of the service. The Lord shall count when he shall write up the people that this man 
was born there. As well as the singers and players of instruments shall be there. All my friends. Everything that keeps life going shall be told beside the church. Now, whether the devil likes that or not, it doesn't matter. Now, Daniel chapter 7, um, verse 27. Hear what he says. And the kingdom, and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom, under the whole level, under the whole level, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. <laughs> so it becomes the call. The Lord said to my Lord, Arise, he said, Sit down at my right hand, till I make the enemies actually. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Amen. Amen. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So we are talking about God's people ruling in the midst of their enemies. And uh, you know, Proverbs 22, verse 7. Mm. The rich ruleth over the poor, and so the borrower is servant to the lender. So there will be stupendous wealth in the body. That will empower believers to be ruling practically, irresistibly, unstoppably in the midst of their enemies. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Wisdom without wealth does not give you a voice. There was a city and a poor wise man, that city who through its wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that poor man. A poor man has no voice. God is going to give the church a voice in these last days. Amen. Because we have been ordained to be ruling in the midst of our enemies before Jesus returns. Somebody's blessed. Amen. Number three, it's a common fact that every breakthrough in the kingdom is rooted in world encounters. Arise, shine, because your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is in upon thee. Upon thee. Darkness shall cover the earth and grow darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles will come to your light. Come and say Revelation. revelation. Every supernatural breakthrough is rooted in the world. The revelation of the truth is what makes it revolutionary. Glory to God. Now, verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud? By the power of light. Praise God. And as those to their windows. Now, see the power of revelation. The breakthrough power of revelation, verse 22. A little one by that light shall become a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in this time. Come and give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. It's not just the word you know, but the word you put to work. What you know and you won't put to work makes you and me a fool. Please. Any man any woman in the kingdom that does not commit himself to putting the work of the word of the Lord that he has encountered to war is making a fool of himself. In Proverbs in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, the Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and dread them, I will like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And then the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock. But whosoever heard this, my word, and dread them not, I would like him unto a foolish man that has built his house upon the sand. And then the rain descended, the same conditions. The floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of. So the breakthrough is not just about encounter with the light of the world, but commitment to the application of revelation. So it's applied revelation that gives value to revelation. Car 
cast your net into the deep for a drought. And when they had this done, not before they did it, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. So breakthrough is about doing what God commands to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, we've labored all night. We've not caught anything. We don't fish in the day. You are not a fisherman, so you don't know what I'm talking about. He said, nevertheless, add thy war. And when they had this done, they enclosed great much of fishes, that their nets began to break. They beckoned on their neighbors. They filled the two ships, the two boats with fishes, and the boat began to sink. Net breaking, boat sinking, other breakthrough at the wall. If you won't put the wall to work, it won't work. It won't work. That's the story of Peter. As we conclude, to command breakthrough in business, one, we must continue to seek first the advancement of the kingdom of God. To maximize our breakthrough package in redemption. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, beyond what Solomon had, shall be added unto you. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you start that from verse 21 down to 23, you see what we're talking about. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be also. In 2 Chronicles 26 and verse 5, we had this king, Goziah, who sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding of the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. He invented angels in Jerusalem, and his fame spread abroad around the world. He was marvelously helped, Till he was great. Verse 15. Praise God. Don't push God aside. And expect to find your way to the front. Number two. We must be committed to the covenant. Of personal. And business titan. Some may want to slay me for that. To keep the heaven over our business. If you are the only one that prospers and your business does not prosper, it will drain your prosperity until it turns into poverty. You can imagine that only pastors here are prosper. Praise God. The demands of this commission will drain the pastors of their prosperity until it turns into poverty below the poverty level of the church. Praise God. Corporate titan is a mystery that this arrogant generation may have, have a problem connecting with. Somebody shared in a testimony, anytime I speak about that, it gets off. This is the one thing I won't do. And business was dying and dying. Until one day he said, Papa doesn't know whether I'm suffering or not. Since I'm the one who decided not to do this, I now decide to do it. And life surged back. Our small ministry is a titan ministry. So don't blame God for opening the heaven over us. Obey this commandment at all costs has brought us by grace to where we are today. And you can also sense what the volume of titan of this commission will be. Glory to God. Somebody's told is changing. Amen. I don't care where you acquire your knowledge from. It is far below this one. My ways are higher than your ways. Instead of school in Harvard. Good. You know how many Harvard graduates are poor? <laughs> you need to collect a data on that. By sending questionnaires to all corporations. And to all banks to find out how many of them are owing. Glory to God. You know where I got my corporate titan from? The Lord said to me, from Hebrews chapter 7, and verse 1 to 8, 
He said the tithe that Abraham paid was not his personal tithe. It was his, it, the tithe of his company. 318 of them that went to war. He said, my son, the same way I open heaven over the lives of individuals, so I open the heavens over corporations, businesses, including churches. I never read from a book in my life. He opened it up to me. It's a seal. And we plunged ourselves into it as a church. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. He has healed the prisoners. The prisoners. Oh, see what the Lord Help me sing it one more time, everybody. Say what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. He has set the captives free and opens the prison doors. Oh, see what the Lord going to be your song over your business from now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Corporate tithing is a covenant jackpot that brings your business and endeavors under an open heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Three, we must be committed to kingdom advancement sacrifices as opportunities show up again and again. That includes sacrificing to promoting kingdom advancement endeavors, giving to the needy, servicing the needs of the needy at your level. From time to time. David said, Now because I've set my affection to towards the house of my God, I've given out of my proper good. You always have your proper good when you set your affliction, affection, sorry, on the house of God. That's where David and his greatness. For it is in thy hand to make great. Both riches and honor come of thee. And thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. By setting his affection on the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. You want to be in command of business breakthrough, then let joy and rejoicing. Both over your business and the affairs of the kingdom become your new lifestyle. Because every seed sown requires joy and rejoicing to turn into harvest. What am I saying? In Joel chapter 1, it said, All the harvest of the field is perished because joy is withered away. From the sons of men. Joy is withered. All the harvest is perished. When joy disappears, harvest is lost. Let the nations rejoice and be glad. Let all the people praise your God. Then shall the earth either increase, and God shall bless us. And not the ends of the earth shall fear you. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. The truth be 28, verse 47 and 48. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies. So joy is a requirement for sustainable breakthroughs in season and out of season. Therefore rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say what? Rejoice. Rejoice evermore. It's a covenant key for continuous harvest. Of every seed sown, every investment made, every time and energy invested is a requirement. 
we must recognize, number five, that everything multiplies with thanksgiving. Why they get destroyed with murmuring and complaints. Jesus gave thanks and the bread and the fish multiplied supernaturally. And a little boy's lunch was able to satisfy 5,000 men, minus women and children, every 10,000 mouths, by the mercy of thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Out of them shall proceed, thanksgiving. And the verse of them that make many. And I will multiply them. Thanksgiving is a multiplier. To take God for granted is to be granted. For every result you see, Father, I thank you. And then you see more results. Can I hear your amen? Amen. And did that moment in the wilderness, why wow, destroy? Mormoning destroys, it does not assist anybody. The people complain. Numbers 11 1. It displeased the Lord. And his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord fell on them. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Everything that murmurs and complains in anyone comes to an end today. Amen. Well, we must connect with parental blessings. I'm talking to all the youths right now. The blessings of your parents are vital to your prevailing in life. Let me read one scripture and then we'll be closer. Genesis 49, verse 22 to 26. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. The ashes have sorely gripped him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. <laughs> Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven from above, one, blessings of the deep that lie under, two, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The mother's blessing. The mother's blessing. The mother's blessing. This arrogant generation should come down to know that the blessings of your mother and fathers are vital to your future. They are vital to your future. Now go to this verse. He said, the blessings of thy father have prevailed. Amen. So you need the blessings of the breast and of the womb. And you need the blessings of the father. How do you get it? Bring me the venison such as I love, that my soul may bless thee before I die. <laughs> Genesis 27. And it came to pass, when Isaac was old and was about to die, he said to his son, Make me savoury meat, such as I love, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. So honoring our parents is what attracts blessings of the soul. What do I call it? Blessings of the soul. Honoring your parents attracts blessings of the soul. Honoring your father, your ah, look, they could have anything. But you need the blessing they carry. And to assess that blessing, you honor them with something precious. Something that provokes the blessing of the soul. Something that does what? Provokes, provokes the, blessings the blessings of the soul. That provokes the blessings of the soul. That provokes the blessings of the soul. My wife and I have such privilege. Now, the blessings that they proclaim on us. You are angry, it can't change it. You are happy, good luck. You are neutral, well done. He said, the blessings of thy father has prevailed in your life above the blessings of your generations before you. Honor thy father and thy mother is the first commandment of the law with a promise that it may be well with you and that it may prolong your days on the earth. That it may be well with you. That it may be well with you. That may be where people that don't mind their parents, they have lost the blessing of the breast and of the womb, and have lost the blessings of the father that caused men to prevail. There are blessings that God reckoned with. 
He said, the Lord thy God bless you with the blessings of heaven, the blessings of the deep, the blessings of the breast and of the womb, and the blessings of thy fathers. God reckons with all of them. Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you this? They don't pray prosperity. They teach it. What do they do? That's why I'm spending my time. I've prayed over you too many times. If you won't do what God says, there's no prayer that can change your story. Isaiah 48 and verse 17. I'm the Lord that teacheth thee to prophet. That leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. They teach it. They don't pray it. So they say, pray, protect over you. It's not true. You are not a tighter. There is no way heaven will open. You are not a kingdom investor. There is no way the heaven will not be short. So, so you don't give to parents who miss the blessings that God comes with. So if you, there are about five point blessings. You can get two out of it. That's uh, 40%. Amen. Somebody gets the one for the father, the one for the mother. He completes it 100%. Praise God. Hallelujah. You better wake up. Yes. I don't have, I don't have. That's why you have not had. When you start connecting with heaven's channel, you start having. I know we have responsible youth in our church. Stay responsible. I bought the first set of furniture for my grandmother. When I was 20 years old. I saw her say to me. You brought this for me. I said yes. You shall be great. A milo of from you. I had it by myself sir. There was nothing. That signifies greatness. Anyway, but I had that blessing of the soul. Of the soul. I bought that furniture for her breakfast. I had that blessing of the soul, sir. I was 20 years old. They who taught me inspiration. This woman is a blessing to my soul. He taught me a lot of things growing up. I don't know when it's going. Let me do something quick. <laughs> Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. And finally, Connect. We must connect with the priestly blessing because God confirms the word of his servants and performs the counsels of his messenger. You know, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. So if anyone is in confident practice and the enemy is resisting him, you are walking free today. Amen. Because he sent me to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil. Anyone that won't let you go, we go down for you. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Somebody was in business and struggling and struggling. Anytime he earned money, took it home. You won't find it. The windows are not broken. The doors are not broken. So he came to church, gave his life to Christ. We gave them a pack for newcomers. So he began to put his money there. And he discovered that the money was no longer lost. It's a long story, sir. Man, when he was overripe for marriage, there was no money. So he started putting money in the hand with his friend. And the money was not lost. So he got married. But three months after that, the wicked was pursuing him. The wife died. But when they got saved and put the money inside that pack, two long mouth rats were going to the corner where he put the money. The two of them died. And he had the shocking part of it. Woke up in the morning. Got news that two of his uncles died that morning. You know when two people die in the same house? Mm. Uh, it's judgment. Mm. What is it? It's enough. It's not a child of God. Mm. You can't molest him anymore. Yes. Two uncles die one day. Mm. Where you have entered the ark of safety. Amen. Any devil that won't let you go forward, having obeyed the terms of the covenant, we go down for you. Amen. Stand to your feet. Everybody. Give the Lord the biggest clap of him. Give the Lord the biggest clap of him. Amen. Give God thanks if you got anything from this message. Give God thanks if you got anything from this message. Give God thanks if you got anything from this message. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed.
How many will say to God, I now know what to do? I now know what to do. Ask him now for grace. To be consistent in your covenant practice. Ask God for grace. To be consistent in your covenant practice. Your breakthrough will know no end. In Jesus precious name we are praying. Amen. Quickly get seated. There are those that need to turn their life over to Christ which is the number one step into a world of breakthroughs. You want to be saved? You want to be free from the oppression of the devil? And going in cycles all the days of your life, I'd like to pray with you. He will forgive your sins and give you eternal life and you'll be a candidate for heaven and a glorious adventure on the earth. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Jesus and not one leg in and one leg out. That man said, I came to church, I dedicated my life to Christ, my wife and my two children. And things began to turn around. You want me to pray with you to be saved or to be restored back to the faith? Wherever you are, lift up your right hand and I pray. You pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I surrender my life to you today. To you. Forgive me all my sins. All my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I believe. My sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you Jesus. For saving my soul. Amen. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Stay covered till the day of his appearing. The grace that brought you into the kingdom today shall preserve you for life. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Congratulations and congratulations. Please send us your testimonies of new birth, of restoration. We'll be glad to partner with you for your further, the furtherance of your joy and faith. You can send that to our contact, newbath at lfcww.org. Shall we all rise? You came with the point of contact for you.